mushroom cannot be grown directly on the straw. And for this, you need to prepare a, a, a specially made substrate that is called as compost. Okay. And this compost is what? It is a, actually, it is aerobic, aerobically fermented uh, raw material. Okay. Aerobically fermented. Uh, uh, means mind my words. This is aerobically fermented substrate. Means the fermentation normally, if you if you if you take the word fermentation, it means uh, the degradation of any raw material in absence of oxygen. But the compost preparation for white button mushroom is different. It is aerobically fermented. Means in presence of oxygen. Uh, if the raw material is fermented, it prepares the compost. Okay. And that is why I, I said that it is a specially made compost. Okay. Because otherwise compost is fermented raw material. And that is anaerobic. But here it is aerobic. Now the question arises here that why button mushroom needs uh, the uh, uh, fermentation or aerobic fermentation. You know... Uh, in case of uh, other mushrooms, uh, if you take an example of uh, human beings itself, uh, I will take a, an example of human beings. What you eat, okay, actually is digested in your gut. Okay, first of all, if you eat something, it goes in your mouth with the saliva, it is degraded to some extent, but then it goes to a stomach. Then it is again degraded to some extent and then it goes to duodenum or the small intestine. Again, it is degraded to some extent and finally it is absorbed into the body. Okay. So, you know, uh, normally what we eat, we eat carbohydrates, we eat proteins, we eat fats, we eat vitamins, right? But the problem is uh, if we eat, say, uh, carbohydrate, what eat? Uh, we eat actually is a starch in, uh, and sugars. But if, say, if we eat something like uh, 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 straw or grass, can we, can we uh, di uh, digest it? No, we cannot. Because, you know, uh, every organism ha has its own enzyme system. And each and every enzyme that is actually responsible for degradation of different kind of uh, food in your body. So that is the reason why uh, mushroom, button mushroom especially, require a composted substrate. Because if you see the texture or structure or component of a straw, you will find that it is, uh, it is made up of cellulose and hemicellulose. Okay. That is the grass material. Okay. As we cannot digest the uh, uh, cellulose or hemicellulose. Similarly, the button mushroom can also not digest the uh, 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 cellulose or hemicellulose. It can, what it can digest is proteins and some, to some extent, lignin. This, that is one uh, component of the straw. So, what is the purpose of composting is, is to convert the cellulose and hemicellulose which is present in the raw material or the straw into proteins. Okay. So when it is converted into protein, the button mushroom can easily utilize that substrate. And that is the reason why we do the composting. Now, how the composting is done? Composting is done because, you know, uh, cellulose and hemicellulose, they are, uh, they are carbon uh, containing compounds. Okay, carbon plus hydrogen plus oxygen. There is no nitrogen present in the uh, uh, cellulose or hemicellulose. Whereas in case of protein, if you take it as protein, it is having carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen also. So what does it mean? It means that you have to supplement nitrogen for your uh, uh, button mushroom composting process. Okay. And secondly, this cannot be done through the chemical process. This is not possible uh, 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 with the chemical process that the raw material or the straw can be converted into proteins. And this is only done through the microorganism like fungi, like bacteria, which can convert cellulose into their body protein because they 
they eat the cellulose and hemicellulose and they convert it to their body proteins and that protein that body protein of the microbes that is actually utilized for the food of button mushroom right so this is the reason why we do the composting and the process of composting is always microbially driven it cannot be chemically driven it is always microbially driven so uh, and now we'll see what are the raw materials and what are the formulations we can use for white pattern mushroom compost production okay so this I, we have already discussed white button mushroom is a fungus it requires well composted material for its growth compost is prepared by using agricultural and animal byproducts compost is a product of fermentation brought about by the variety of microorganism that can be fungi that can be bacteria and end product is most suitable for the growth of mushroom at practical exclusion of the competitors because most of the competitor they love to grow on cellulose and hemicellulose or sugars okay basically sugars whereas the button mushroom require proteins so if your substrate is completely converted into protein so no other microorganism will grow uh, uh, in the properly made compost okay so that is the reason why compost is required for button mushroom growing now this is some of the elemental requirement of the button mushroom like nitrogen phosphorus uh, potassium calcium and magnesium rest of the thing you can means you don't have to bother like phosphorus uh, calcium potassium uh, magnesium this actually this is available in the uh, raw material if you are using the organic raw material like a straw like chicken manure or horse manure you get the other uh, in elements but you know uh, uh, nitrogen has to be supplemented and has to be uh, uh, managed so that the percentage of nitrogen should be in between 1.6 to 1.9 percent when you start your composting process right so the most important thing is the nitrogen because conversion of protein requires the nitrogen okay the rest of the things are uh, minor elements which are required for the enzyme activity of the mushroom okay so even if it is very in very a small amount it will work but nitrogen you know this is the uh, basis of the compost uh, for the white pattern okay so nitrogen has to be balanced between 1.6 to 1.9 percent now uh, coming to the base material the base material is always you know wheat straw paddy straw sugarcane bagasse soybean straw mustard straw or any kind of a straw you can use okay any kind of a straw can be used for for base material okay like jowar bajra mustard anything 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 you can use right so and these are mainly we have already discussed that these are the reservoir of cellulose and hemicellulose and provide carbon nutrition not the nitrogen nutrition okay so and uh, uh, the some considerations are there when you are using these base materials like it should be fresh uh, even if it is not freshly harvested if it is kept properly under a shed or under a polythene sheet uh, so that it is not exposed to the rain water then it is fine you can use these uh, this kind of a straw very easily second thing is the length of the straw normally if it is having one to two inches length straw length then it is very very good for making uh, compost okay because you know this is a aerobic fermentation and if the size of the straw is very small then the pass uh, or passage for air will be very low so in that case if it is one to two inches long it is very good but even if it is not uh, like that means one to two inch long you can use it but uh, uh, you have to be careful with harder straws you can use even a smaller size but with softer straws you have to have some longer uh, uh, size of the straw like uh, if we divide uh, the base material into harder straws and softer straws then there is wheat straw okay uh, 
uh, is a harder straw. Soya, so, sugar cane bagasse is a harder straw. Soya bean straw is a harder straw. Mustard straw is a harder straw. But paddy straw is a soft straw. Okay. So it, what does it mean? The wheat straw, sugar cane bagasse, soya bean straw, mustard straw, even the size is very less. Even then, you can easily use these materials for compost preparation. But with paddy straw, no. You have to have a longer paddy straw. Okay. Like two to three inches size. If it is there, then it will be very good. Okay. So, uh, if we see, because, you know, uh, plant also contains uh, cell wall uh, and uh, uh, their body parts. So, they also have some some kind of means some part of nitrogen is also there. So almost 0.4 to 1% nitrogen is present in case of the uh, straw, uh, any kind of a straw, depending upon the straw, like wheat straw, 0.4 to 0.5% of nitrogen is there. Uh, in case of paddy straw, 0.6 to 0.7% nitrogen is there. In sugarcane bagasse, almost 1% nitrogen is there. Soya bean straw, 1% nitrogen is there. Mustard straw, 1.1, 1.2% of nitrogen you will find. So first thing you have to see, any kind of a straw you can use, but you have to see what is the nitrogen percentage of the particular straw. So there are two ways uh, by, uh, by which you can know, you can come to know that what is the nitrogen percent. First, uh, in every district of the country, uh, there is a soil testing laboratory of agriculture department. So you can go there, you can take your straw or you can take your uh, raw material and get the nitrogen checked from the soil testing laboratory. Okay. The second thing is, if you don't have or, uh, access to a soil testing laboratory nearby you, then you, you can Google it. Means just search on internet that what is the nitrogen percentage of the particular straw, you will get the uh, nitrogen percent because there are so many works published about the nitrogen percentage, uh, uh, then different kind of mineral, uh, different uh, moisture percentage, everything is given in the, uh, on the net. So you can also check there. So in the net, if you, if you get something like 1%, so you can, you can have 10 to 15% variation means plus minus 10 to 15% means 1% if it is written, it can be 1.1 to 1.5% or it can be 0.9 or 0.85%. The maximum difference is 10%, not more than that, right? So you can take it as uh, what is given on the internet. Now, second thing is because you know that uh, straw is uh, uh, a reservoir of carbon, okay? But for conversion of cellulose and hemicellulose into proteins, we require uh, nitrogen also. We require nitrogen also. So that has to be supplemented. And normally we supply, supplement it by horse manure or chicken manure. Or any kind of manure can be used. Uh, in this case, like uh, sheep manure, goat manure, uh, uh, pig manure, any type of manure we can use. But hot, uh, cow manure or the buffalo manure that cannot be used for the purpose. Okay. Uh, the cow dung and the horse, uh, sorry, buffalo dung cannot be used for, to make the compost. Because, you know, uh, in, in horse dung, uh, sorry, in cow dung or buffalo dung, uh, there are certain bacteria uh, which are antibiotic producing in nature. Means they, they produce antibiotic in the, uh, in the medium. So when, if you put the cow dung or the buffalo dung into the composting material, so all the microorganisms which are leading or which are conducting the, the composting process uh, that will be killed or that will be having halt, okay, or they will not work. So then your composting process will slow down, okay. So that is why we don't use cow dung or the buffalo dung, but rest of any kind of manure can be used for preparing the compost, okay. Normally the nitrogen percent is 2 to 3 percent in this case. If you, if you go, uh, uh, the, the third component in this case, or uh, compost making is the carbohydrate source. Means any, anyone, anyone, any, any organism needs some energy to work. Okay. Because you know, the cellulose and hemicellulose are polysaccharides. 
so they are the chain of glucose okay Lo long long chains of the glucose so if you have to use the uh, i mean uh, uh, cellulose or hemicellulose you have to break down these chains and then take out the sugar molecules and then you can utilize it for energy production okay so it actually needs some energy to break down the cellulosic or hemicellulosic material for the fungi or for the bacteria right so in that case if you don't give any kind of carbohydrate source or any kind of instant sugar source the composting process will be slowed down okay so that is why carbohydrate sources are required which is also known as activators we call it as activator of composting means they activate the composting process okay so in carbohydrate sources we can use wheat bran or we can use paddy bran we can use molasses we can use any kind of rotten fruit okay that can be used for uh, uh, as activator for the composting then uh, coming to the third component the nitrogenous fertilizer even if we, we have 0.4 to 1% nitrogen in case of uh, 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 straw or 2 to 3% nitrogen in case of uh, uh, manures but you know to some extent you will not be able to fulfill the nitrogen requirement of the composting process like that is 1.6 to 1.9% okay so for that we need to add a little amount of uh, uh, inorganic nitrogenous fertilizer like urea like calcium ammonium nitrate like ammonium sulfate like uh, uh, npk like diammonium phosphate so there are many nitrogenous fertilizer that can be used for the purpose okay and that actually supplements the nitrogen in the uh, uh, compost okay so uh, but you know some people they they do not want to go with the you know inorganic nitrogenous fertilizers so in that case you have to have some other supplements to add for the nitrogen supplementation like uh, you can increase wheat or rice bran concentration you can you can add dried brewer's grain what is brewer's grain is nothing but it is uh, when the when you know uh, uh, the, the 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 wines they are made up uh, by the fermentation they are made by fermentation of grains okay and these grains are a waste material after after the fermentation so that brewer's grain when you dry it that can be used for the uh, uh, purpose of your uh, uh, concentrated meals okay and that is a by product of any kind of distillery like beer distilleries or whiskey distilleries or or other kinds of wine distilleries so they are easily available and that actually they, that is waste for the distilleries and they 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 want to means dispose it off so you can easily collect it from any kind any any distilleries okay then uh, soya bean seed meal seed cake uh, or any kind of uh, uh, oil oil seed cake any kind of oil seed cake can be used means when the oil is taken out from the soya bean the rest uh, of the material that can be used for uh, concentrated meal cotton seed meal uh, that can also be used castor seed meal can also be used sunflower seed meal can also be used or seed cake can also be used or your you know uh, mustard seed cake can also be used so these are normally used as animal feeds okay so they they have they are rich in nitrogen and carbohydrates both so but you know animal feeds are costlier okay so if you if you use uh, in comparison to the inorganic fertilizers so many people go for inorganic fertilizer but yes if you don't want to use inorganic fertilizer you can go with the animal feeds or concentrated meals right so nitrogen co concentration normally varies between these is 3 to 12% okay of nitrogen so that can also be used for the purpose sometimes it happens uh, the another part is then if you are not uh, using any kind of concentrated meal and if you are not using any kind of uh, animal manure you are directly going with the straw and some inorganic fertilizers and then you you go for composting process okay so in that case you you get some mineral deficiencies like potassium will be lesser 
like uh, phosphorus will be lesser uh, like calcium magnesium will be uh, in a scarce in your in your composting mixture so that actually hampers the composting process negatively because you know these are the minerals which actually helps the enzyme to work in any kind of organism right from plants fungi plants animals human beings everywhere we require some of the minerals okay so that is why you you need to have some minerals in that particular case where inorganic compost is been made right then uh, uh, you know in any case even even if you are using uh, uh, organic material like chicken manure or or your concentrated meals or even even if you are not using them uh, means your compost is organic or your compost is inorganic doesn't matter but gypsum has to be used by in any case gypsum is the most important part in the composting process because it is having three functions first function is gypsum you know uh, gypsum is a is a salt when it is mixed with the water uh, it produce it produces a transient kind of acid very short lived acid that is known as hydro uh, sorry sulfurous acid and that sulfurous acid reduces the ph or balances the ph of your compost because you know ph everyone i think know ph is what ph is acidity or basicity of any material it is known as ph so normally the ph required for the composting is around 7 okay whereas in case when you start the composting process the ph of your composting mixture is around 10 or 10.5 okay and uh, you require a ph of 7 so gypsum actually reduces the ph of the composting mixture to 7 so that your compost is made fastly okay and quickly the second function of the gypsum is you know gypsum is also known as plaster of paris pop it is also known as pop which we normally use for Uh, painting our houses and then also making statues so in many places we use pop pop is nothing but it is gypsum so uh, if you if you correlate uh, your uh, means uh, uh, these things together so pop you will get a uh, some property uh, of removing the excess water because in the gypsum or in the pop when you add water it absorbs the water and becomes hard okay so it means it it absorbs excess of water so that is the property of gypsum and if uh, during the wetting of your uh, straw or your compost if water is becomes high so that then the composting mixture becomes greasy too much water is there so that uh, addition of gypsum or plaster of paris removes the greasiness of the of the compost because you know if the compost is greasy then the air passages will be very very less okay so there will be anaerobic fermentation uh, rather than aerobic fermentation so your compost will go waste so that is why second function of the gypsum is to remove the excess water from the composting mixture and the third is you know gypsum formula is calcium sulfate right so calcium sulfate so it supplements the calcium for the uh, uh, for the growth of different microorganisms so these are the three functions of the gypsum and that is why gypsum is very very important for the composting process now this is the this is some, i have listed some of the Uh, uh materials or raw materials uh, uh with their moisture percentage and nitrogen percentage like wheat is straw 10% nitrogen 0.4% paddy straw 10% nitrogen percent 0.7% mustard straw 10% moisture 1% uh, moisture so this is i this i have given here now coming to how to uh, make your own formula because you know <clears throat> formula is very very important formula is very important because you know if you if you are working somewhere in odisha or somewhere in west bengal or somewhere in south india then you will not find any kind of wheat straw okay you will find paddy straw or something else so you have to make your formula with that particular raw material 
if you have to purchase the raw material from far off places then the cost of the transportation will add to the production cost of your mushroom so it means you have to make the formula so as to minimize the cost of production of mushroom okay so that is why uh, nitrogen computation guideline is very important here you see i have i have taken a a, a, a sample uh, formula that is wheat straw chicken manure wheat bran urea and gypsum right so in place of wheat straw any kind of straw you can use in place of chicken manure any kind of animal manure you can use and if you don't want to use chicken manure you can just add the concentrated meals here also in case of bran in place of wheat bran you can use rice bran you can use molasses you can use uh, uh, rotten fruit or anything like that uh, in case of urea if you don't want to urea again you have to go for uh, uh, the your uh, you know uh, concentrated meals and gypsum that is that you have to use now how to calculate the formula so we have taken say 1000 kg fresh weight of the wheat straw so the moisture is 10% and the dry weight is will be 900 kg and if it is having 0.4% of nitrogen you will get 3.6 kg of nitrogen total nitrogen here from the wheat straw in chicken in case of chicken manure 40 to 60% you can add of the fresh weight of the wheat straw so uh, if wheat straw is 1000 kg 60% if we have taken then 600 kg fresh weight of chicken manure we can take 20% is the moisture in chicken manure so dry weight will be 480 kg if 3% nitrogen is there you will get the nit total nitrogen 40 14.4 kg of nitrogen here in case of wheat bran 10 to 15% you can use so here we have used 10% so moisture percent is again 10% 90 kg is the dry weight 2% is the nitrogen concentration so total 1.8 kg of nitrogen you get from uh wheat bran then coming to urea you can use maximum 2% this is the limit you cannot go more than 2% in case of urea because this is a amide source urea is a amide source which it produces ammo ammonia gas in the composting mixture so if you add more urea so it means more ammonia will be in in your composting mixture and if that ammonia is not utilized or is not converted fully into the proteins then this ammonia is deleterious or harmful for the mushroom mycelium it can kill mushroom mycelium so that is why we say that urea percent has to be means calculated very carefully and at the max it can be 2% not more than that right so we have taken here 1.5% moisture is 0% here because urea is a chemical compound dry weight will be 15 kg 46% is the nitrogen in the urea so total 6.44 kg you will get from 15 kg of urea you will get 6.44 kg of nitrogen and gypsum you can use 5 to 10% because nitrogen is zero so you take it as zero but here you have to calculate the in the dry weight so here how to decide that how much gypsum has to be added if you are it depends on the ph of the water you cannot means uh, uh, generalize that this much of gypsum can be used or should be used okay because uh, gypsum uh, addition of gypsum is very important so it depends on the ph of your water if your ph of your water is around 7 or something like that then 5% will be sufficient up even up to 7.5 ph is there of the water you you can use it for 5% gypsum okay but if it is more than that like 8 or something like that 8.5 so they can then you you have to use 7 to 8% of gypsum and if it is even more than that more than 8.5 ph then you have to go with the 10% of gypsum so you have to decide that how much gypsum has to be added depending upon the ph of your water right so after calculating the total kilogram of nitrogen we 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 total the kilogram of nitrogen so that is here you can see this is 26.24 kg of nitrogen uh, is there 
And if we calculate the total dry weight, this is 1535 kg of uh, uh, your uh, dry weight. So we divide 26.24 divided by 1535 and then we multiply it by, with by 100. Like the here, 26.24 divided by 15, so 35 multiplied by 100. So your nitrogen percent comes around 1.71%. So before starting any composting process, you have you must calculate the nitrogen percentage and it should fall between 1.6 to 1.9% of nitrogen uh, in the uh, starting of the composting process. So first you have to make the formula and then only uh, you, you should start the composting process, right? So coming to... Yeah, Hmm. So uh, now here uh, to uh, we will start the process how to make the compost. So here you can see we have two methods. Long method and short method. Hello. Anji. Uh, sir, I will, I will discuss you later because I am in the class right now. Uh, so, uh, we have two methods of compost preparation. Uh, one is long method and another is short method. Okay. Long method, uh, you know, uh, in the long method, what we do actually, we wet all the ingredients together, mix it, and then we, we go for a turning. Okay. Means uh, we turn the compost pile uh, uh, in the interval of three to four days. And finally, after 28, 29 days, you get the final compost. Okay. The second method is short method. In short method, we have two phases. The first phase is outdoor phase where we uh, wet the substrate, mix them, uh, allow them to ferment uh, for some uh, period of time, like seven to eight days. And then we take it to indoor phase, second phase. That is, that is done inside the uh, 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 a pasteurization room where we do the pasteurization of the composting means all the harmful organisms are killed during the pasteurization process. So it means uh, if we take long method, there will be so many propagules or inoculum of the diseases or the molds. Uh, so that will have a lesser yield. Whereas in case of short method, because pasteurization has been done, so there, there is less chances of getting diseases and molds, so you will get a better yield. So that is the reason why animal manures are not used in long method of compost. Because if you use animal manure in long method of compost, the chances of getting diseases or molds will be very, very high. So in that case, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes it happens that you will not be able to harvest a single plus of the mushroom. Okay. So that is why uh, in case of long method, you can see this is a completely inorganic method. Uh, wheat straw, calcium, ammonium, nitrate, superphosphate, urea, sulfate of potassium, wheat bran, molasses, gypsum. So these are all uh, basically uh, uh, inorganic substances. So in case of short method, you can go for, you know, uh, sorry, organic substances, even the animal manures can be used. Okay, coming to the process of uh, 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 long method. First of all, we will take long method. So in case of long method formula, you have seen it. Uh, it can be uh, made from wheat straw alone. It can be made from paddy straw alone. It can be made from a mixture of both. Okay. Anil, class, no. Class, uh, class, no. Tarlo baat. नहीं मैं तो हूँ ही नहीं मैं कल जा रहा हूँ सुबह चार बजे 
मैं जा रहा हूं उधर झारखंड में ट्रेनिंग में बात कर लो सर से बात कर लो ना पता नहीं हमको नहीं मालूम सर से बात कर लो एक बार सर से बात कर लो है ना सो सो इन इन लॉन्ग मेथड ऑफ कंपोस्ट व्हाट वी व्हाट आर द फैसिलिटीज रिक्वायर्ड फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस फॉर लॉन्ग मेथड ऑफ कंपोस्ट वी डोंट रिक्वायर एनी फैसिलिटी मींस समटाइम्स वी कैन हैव अ मींस टिन शेड और वी कैन हैव अ पॉलीथीन शेड और इवन डायरेक्टली इन द सन वी कैन मेक द कंपोस्ट but you have to be sure that during the period of composting there should not be any rain if there is a rain uh, during the composting process uh, uh, composting period and if your composting mixture is exposed to rain all the ingredients or all the nutrition from your composting mixture will go out into the uh, uh, means soil so that will be complete waste of the uh, your composting material right so that is the reason you need to have a uh, at least a shed uh, 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 for compost preparation even if you if you don't have a shed no problem if you know that at this particular time the chances of rains are very very low or minimal or there is no chance of rain then you can go directly uh, outside also for compost preparation right so for this we take first of all we take raw material uh, after taking the raw material we wet it properly okay with the water and normally you know uh, 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 the water need needed to to make the compost is almost 2.5 times of the total raw material if the 1535 kg of raw material is there in in your formula then you will require 2.5 times of Uh, the dry weight of the formula water right uh, in case of uh, harder straw harder straw means like wheat straw or paddy straw, sorry wheat straw sugar cane bagasse mustard straw these uh, in that case you need to have 2.5 times of water but in case of paddy straw you require only uh, one and half times of water like 1000 kg of paddy straw if you are using you will be requiring only 1500 liters of water not more than that otherwise uh, your whole compost will go waste and many people complain that with paddy straw if we make the compost we do not uh, get proper compost and th this is the reason behind it because when you when you add excess water in paddy straw so aeration uh, is a uh, means uh, uh, aeration becomes a scarce so there is no oxygen inside the composting mixture and in that case you will have uh, uh, not you will you will you will not be able to produce good compost right so in that case you have to be careful about it and uh, uh, for paddy straw just one and half times water is required okay so after wetting then we mix everything together or everything excepting gypsum no gypsum is added at this point of time okay so we mix it like this uh, with using the fork we mix it and make a heap of it okay we just make a heap of it okay so uh, after uh, after making the heap we leave it for for 24 48 hours okay normally wetting period it takes okay so uh, uh, for uh, okay for wetting wetting it takes uh, about uh, uh, 48 hours time and then after mixing we again keep it for 48 hours okay so almost 4 days we keep it as heap and then we mix it together again and make a pile of it and pile uh, should have the dimension of 5 feet width and 5 feet height the length can be any and this can be done by by using some uh, wooden planks or iron planks you can easily you can see here these are the iron planks uh, the height uh, should be 5 feet and the width should be 5 feet so if it is like this 5 feet then it is fine okay so we make a pile of it 
Okay, this is the file. We made it and then we add one thermometer here. Dial thermometer is there and the sensor is almost one meter long uh, and the cost uh, will be around 2000 rupees or something like that. Okay, it is made up actually with a thermocouple and uh, with the uh, means uh, thermocouple is there and that sends the uh, uh, temperature and shows the temperature. Okay. Yeah, this is too much. Sir, class no. PRC are Badiya, sir, class no. Okay. I will do it later. Okay, sir. So, uh, you know, uh, the pile is uh, uh, like this. The width should be 5 feet, height should be 5 feet, maximum, even if it can be lesser, right? So, this is the, uh, if, we, if we cut the cross section of this compost pile, you will see this is the aerobic zone, okay? This is the aerobic zone where the air can reach. The temperature range is about 60 to 65 degrees centigrade. If you go a little inside, about 70 to 75 degree temperature is there. And this is semi-aerobic zone. And the center one is anaerobic zone where the temperature again do not rise. 60 to 65 degree centigrade is there. And, uh, uh, and due to this anaerobic zone, uh, if, you, if you say, if you are increasing the height of the composting pile or increasing the width of the composting pile, this... Uh, anaerobic gene zone will also increase. So, so the purpose of limiting the weight and the height of a pile is nothing but it is to restrict the anaerobic zone. So we have to minimize the anaerobic zone. So that is why the, the cross section, uh, I have shown the cross section of the pile. So and now uh, after mixing and making the pile, we keep it for three days. Okay, we keep it for three days and wait uh, for the temperature to rise. When your temperature crosses 70 degrees centigrade, uh, then it means you have to turn it now. So normally the temperature, 70 degree temperature uh, uh, crosses in the compost pile uh, on the third day. Okay, so after 72 hours or third day, you have to break the pile, mix the pile properly and again you have to make the Okay, so this can be done manually, this can be done through machines also. But in case of long method of composting, nobody uh, goes for the machine turning because the cost of the machine is too high, around 50 lakhs, 40 to 50 lakhs rupees uh, for one machine. Uh, so uh, you need not to go with the uh, machine in long method. If you are going to make uh, the compost with long method, uh, you can do it manually with the help of labors also. Right. So also, if you find that uh, water is less uh, in, during the first turning, you can add some water. Okay. Then after uh, third day, you will see again, you have made the pile on the third day after mixing and uh, uh, breaking the pile and then mixing and then again, you made the pile. So now this time you will see that the temperature rise will be faster than the first turning. So within means... 48 hours, the temperature will cross 70 degrees centigrade. And this time on fifth day only, you have to turn the pile. Okay. You have to break the pile, mix the pile and again make the pile. So on the fifth day, second turning will be on fifth day. And the third turning will be on seventh day. Right. So on the third turning, we have to add gypsum. Okay. And the reason for it is, uh, that during first or second turning, you can add some extent of water. Because if you are say that uh, if you are making the compost in a hotter place, so there will be evaporation of water from your composting pile. So maybe that when you are wetting the compost uh, uh, straw, your compost uh, has not taken water properly and it becomes dry. So in that case, during the first turning or second turning, you can add some water so that the moisture contents becomes optimum uh, during the first or second turning. And on the third turning, we have to add gypsum because uh, when you add the gypsum, you cannot add extra water in the composting pile. So that is why the 
and addition of gypsum is little delayed right so on the third turn normally we add gypsum on the seventh day so now after adding the gyps gypsum the first thing is uh, your your moisture content will be lesser the second thing is that the, the ph of the uh, composting mixture will be around 7 to 7.5 so it means the temperature rise will be slower in after addition of this gypsum the rise of the temperature will be slower and even the temperature will not go up to 70 degree centigrade so at this time after addition of gypsum you have to add one day extra in each turning okay like uh, on seventh day you have given turning now should be given on ninth day but just we have to add one day to this so we, instead of ninth day we will turn the pile on 10th day and again we will add one day so two days we have left in between 7th or 10th so uh, now three days we have to leave so 11 12 13 so 14th day we have to give next turning again we have to add one day more so 19th day we have to give another turning and then 24th day we have to give another turning and finally on 28th or 29th day you have to break the pile and then your compost is ready for composting okay so this is the complete flow chart of the uh, uh, long method of composting right now here in this case you might have seen that there is no pasteurization method or pasteurization process for the long method of compost so the chances of getting diseases and molds are too high in this case so for this to re to reduce the chances of molds or diseases we have to treat it with some chemicals okay so for this for 1 ton of compost we 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 have to use 40 liters of water in 40 liters of water we add 1.5 liters of formaldehyde and 50 grams of uh, formal uh, sorry uh, mavistine okay uh, or, or carbendazine not only bavestine it can be any type of carbendazine can be used we add it uh, and spray it on the whole compost then cover the compost with polythene sheet okay we cover the compost with polythene sheet leave it for 48 hours at least minimum 48 hours we leave it as such okay and then remove the sheet we remove the sheet and we shake the compost properly so that the trapped fumes of formaldehyde goes off into the atmosphere and then we add some uh, uh, means we add a spawn and go for cropping of the mushroom right so this is long method of composting uh there are some uh, uh, means uh, there are some uh, modifications in long method of composting uh, we have done uh, that is known as zero energy polytunnel so in this case you can see uh here you can see uh, it this is a uh, the uh, modification of zero energy polytunnel where we we use the perforated pipes you can see this is perforated pipes three pipes on the lower side uh, uh, with a difference of 1.5 feet each so it can go up to 6 feet okay uh, this distance between two pipe is 1.5 feet okay then in the center of this these two pipes one pipe in the center of these two pipes one pipe we keep it okay and again on the top on the center of these two pipes we keep one pipe here okay and uh, uh, this is all perforated pipes okay and from the lower half feet uh, distance is there then in between the two pipes the distance between the means vertical distance between the two pipe is 1.5 so 1.5 1.5 1.5 4.5 and half feet on the lower side so total 5 feet height of the uh, uh, pile will be there okay so and then we fill it with the compost okay we fill it with the composting mixture and then we cover it with the polythene sheet black polythene sheet uh, the the tarpaulin you can say we cover it with the black polythene sheet all over from the front and from the back also leaving the the area of the uh, pipes so we make holes in the in the flap uh, in the polythene flap at this place in these places okay 
so this is the uh, poly tunnel uh, zero energy poly tunnel technique how to do it <coughs> so first of all we mix everything together we wet it and we mix everything together like gypsum is also mixed uh, uh, at one time itself okay and then we put it to the zero energy poly tunnel cover it with the polythene from all the sides from the sides and from front and also from the back okay and leave it for three days the temperature goes up to 70 degrees centigrade for three days so just hold on please uh, i will i will be needing five minutes Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was a little stuck up. Okay, fine. So, uh, uh, we discussed that uh, uh, the pre-wetted compost is filled and then we cover it with polythene seeds from all the sides, from even from the front and the back. Leave it for three days. That The temperature will be around 66 to 70 degrees centigrade. And after, after three days, the front flap and the back flap is removed. Okay for another two days so due to removal of the front and the back flap the temperature of the pile is reduced up to 60 degrees centigrade the temperature becomes around 60 degrees centigrade so this is the conditioning of the compost at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade and this is the first natural pasteurization 66 to 70 degrees centigrade then first turning of the pile is given on the sixth day three and two five so on the sixth day, we give the first turning to the pile. Then again, we make the pile in same way. And then again, we cover it from all the side, even from the front end and the back end also. And then we leave it for again two days. The temperature is around 60 to 65 degrees centigrade at this point of time. And then again, we remove after two days, we remove the front flap and the back flap and the temperature becomes 50 to 55 degrees centigrade uh, in the second turning. Okay, so total four days, so six and four, 10 days. So 11th day, we have to give the second turning. Okay, and on 11th day, we give the second turning and we again make the pile. Okay, and again cover it with the polythene for, uh, from all the sides, from fr the front cover and the back cover is also uh, in place. And then we keep it for three days, okay? And at this point of time, time temperature is around 55 to 58 degrees centigrade. And then we remove, after three days, we remove the front flap and back flap, and you get 48 to 50 degrees centigrade temperature. So the total time taken, that is 11 plus uh, 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 three and two. Okay, five. So 16 days, the total time it takes the 16 days in completing the, uh, uh, the composting process. And the yield of this kind of compost is also very good. It is not comparable to short method, but yes, uh, it is quite better than the long method of composting. But you know, uh, the, the, long, the zero energy polytunnel can all, only be used in case of uh, uh, the seasonal cultivation where we, we cultivate the mushroom depending upon the season there we can use the zero energy polytunnel but if you are going to use uh, or you, you are going to grow the mushroom round the year then it is very difficult to use the zero energy polytunnel 
Now coming to short method. <coughs> Coming to short method, uh, in case of short method, the first seven days are exactly similar to uh, long method of composting. Like first we wet the uh, uh, the straw, we wet the uh, other ingredients, mix other all the ingredients together, make a heap out of it, keep the heap for 48 hours, then make a pile of five feet and five feet, and then we give the first turning on third day, second turning on fifth day, third turning on seventh day. We add on seventh day we add the gypsum in the mixture and up to this exactly same uh, process is there uh, in short method but after seventh day we we have to pasteurize the whole compost and that is done inside a, a, a pasteurization tunnel okay and this is the pasteurization tunnel you can see this is the door uh, this is the recirculation duct i will i'll show you and this is the exhaust vent. So if you see, uh, this is the structure of a, a bulk pasteurization or pasteurization room or pasteurization tunnel. This is nothing but this is a room simply uh, having two doors, one in the front, one in the back. Okay. All the walls are insulated. All the walls are insulated with thermal insulation that can be thermopole, that can be puff panel, anything but that has to be insulated so that the temperature or heat from inside should not go outside and from outside should not come inside. So it is completely cut off from the uh, uh, outside environment uh, uh, in respect of heat. Okay. And uh, you can see there are two uh, floors are there. One floor is normal floor with holes, with many holes. Okay. With many holes. And then there is a a basement like a structure which we called it as planum okay it is a slanted planum and the slope is around two percent so this will be discussed in the uh, 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 farm design class not here so here just you know that it is a slope uh, slanted floor which we call it, it as planum the perforated floor is there okay and here is a exhaust vent is there in in the in the in the tunnel and there is a circle recirculation duct. like see here it is a blower fan blower fan pulls uh, means uh, pushes the air inside the air goes through the compost come to the upper part of the compost then go to the recirculation duct and this is the recirculation duct again come to the blower again it is recirculated in the compost okay and there is just opposite to the recirculation duct, there is a fresh air vent. Okay, there is a fresh air vent from where the fresh air can be sucked inside the uh, uh, your compost. And both the recirculation duct and the fresh air vent both have volume regulators. You can you can open the fresh air vent or you can open the recirculation vent as per your need. Okay. Normally, it, it works in a vice versa manner. Means if you open the fresh air vent, the recirculation will, vent will be closed. Like if you open 10% of fresh air vent, then your uh, recirculation vent will be closed by 10%. If it is 20% fresh air vent, then this will be 80%. If it is 80%, then it will be 20%. So likewise, uh, this works vice versa. Just opposite. So normally what we do, we put a single lever to control both the two means these are there are two means iron bars which is connected with the volume controllers with one uh, lever here so if one lever is pulled this side so it means your recirculation duct is open okay when you pull the lever this side then your fresh air vent will be opened so likewise you can control the recirculation duct and fresh air vent okay so what we do exactly, we fill the compost into the uh, 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 this compost uh, pasteurization tunnel. The height should be between six to seven feet, not more than seven feet, not less than six feet. So it should be in between six to seven feet. We fill the compost on eighth day into the uh, pasteurization tunnel. Okay. And just we close the doors. Okay. And in the compost, we normally we put three temperature sensors, one in the air here, 
one in the compost here and one in the planum here. And then we take out these sensor, connect this sensor with wire with outside display, with a display which is kept outside so that we can see the temperature difference between these three uh, uh, temperature probes. Okay. Uh, then we close the doors. We close the fresh air vent 100%. When you close the fresh air vent 100%, it means your recirculation vent is open 100%. So the air will recirculate. When you blow the air, the air will flow like this. Okay. This will be flowed like this. Right. So this is called as recirculation. So first of all, we do the recirculation. Uh, initially, what we see the temperature here, temperature here and temperature here. Uh, there is a difference of at least 7 to 8 degree in all the three uh, uh, temperature sensors. Almost 10 degree, it can be even 10 degree difference between the temperature sensors. When you uh, means uh, recirculate the air, what will happen? The temperature slowly uh, uh, becomes equal in all the three uh, sensors. Almost 2 to 3 degree difference is uh, acceptable, not more than that. Okay in all the sensors, two to three degree difference is acceptable, not more than that. So once it becomes or it becomes in the range of two to three degree, all the three uh, temperature sensors, then what we do, we open the uh, fresh air vent to some extent, because you know that the composting process is the aerobic process. So it requires oxygen for the growth of the microorganism. So as soon as you open the fresh air vent, say by 10%, the fresh air will go inside it, okay, and go into the compost. So microbial activity suddenly becomes fast. So the temperature will increase. As soon as you open the fresh air vent, your temperature will in start increasing. So you have to see uh, that how much you have to open, like 10% or 15%, so that the temperature of the compost now you have to see the temperature of compost only, not anything else. Class me, sir. Sir, class me, sir. Huh? I'm a class me, sir. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ha, ha, please. अभी तुम क्लास खत्म करेंगे फिर हमको सैंक्शन लेना है हाँ अभी क्लास में हैं सो व्हेन यू ओपन द फ्रेश एयर वेंट इस टेम्परेचर स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग यू हैव टू एडजस्ट द टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज एट द रेट ऑफ 0.3 टू 0.5 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड पर आवर ओके सो से यू हैव ओपन 10 परसेंट फ्रेश एयर वेंट your temperature is increasing by 0.2 degree uh, centigrade per hour. In one hour, the increment is 0.2 degree. Then it means you have opened less. So you have to open more. So say by at 15% fresh air opening, your temperature rise is at the rate of 0.5 degree centigrade. So it is fine. You can go with that, right? So let it uh, open 15% and let it grow. Let the temperature grow. Uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 degree centigrade per hour to 58 degree centigrade. As soon as your temperature of compost reaches to 58 degree centigrade, at 1 degree centigrade, then you have to see that your temperature remains constant at 58, 59 or 60 degree centigrade for 6 to 8 hours. And for that, what you have to do, you have to open the fresh air vent more. Like at 15% your temperature was rising at the rate of 0 0.3 degree centigrade. <coughs> you open it 25 degree percent. So when you open it 25%, what will happen? There are three possibilities. One possibility that your temperature will still rise. <coughs> okay. Then you have to uh, means open the fresh air vent more like 30% or something like that. Okay so that your temperature becomes stabilized. But second option is, uh, or second probability is that your temperature becomes a static at 58, 59 degrees centigrade. Then it is fine. Nothing is to be done. Okay. Just, may, just, just 
keep it constant at 58 to 60 degree centigrade or 62 degree centigrade maximum and for 6 to 8 hours the third uh, probability is that your temperature will go down so in that case you have to reduce the uh, fresh air vent from 25 to 20 or something like that okay you just re reduce the fresh air vent so that just uh, i mean to say that you have to make sure that your temperature of your compost should be between 58 to 62 degree centigrade not more than that not less than that <laughs> right so this is the pasteurization temperature at this temperature all the harmful organism is killed but see if your temperature goes more than uh, uh, 62 or 63 degree centigrade then what will happen that all the beneficial organism will also be killed the the organism which helps the mushroom helps mushroom to grow that will also be killed so that cannot be done so remember if your temperature crosses 62 degree centigrade your compost will be less productive means the the yield of your compost will be reduced by means 5 to 7 percent if you are getting 17 18 or 20 percent conversion uh, per 100 kg 20 kg mushroom you if you are getting but if your compost has gone to 63 or 64 degree centigrade for five to six hours then what will happen your yield of your compost will be reduced by 10 or 11 kg per 100 kg of compost so this much of difference can happen even one or two degree centigrade increment more than 62 degree centigrade so you have to be careful that your temperature should not rise beyond 62 degree centigrade right so once your pasteurization is done then you have to reduce the temperature to 50 degree centigrade and for that you have to increase the fresh air vent like at 25 percent if your uh, temperature of the compost was static so you take it to 30 percent at this uh, fresh air your temperature will go down okay and let it be down up to 52 degree centigrade once it touches 52 degree centigrade then again you have to uh, control it or reduce the fresh air to 25 percent again so that your temperature of your compost becomes a static between 50 to 52 degree centigrade okay and this is called conditioning temperature you have to keep your compost at this temperature for 48 hours next 48 hours okay and this is conditioning temperature where beneficial organism uh, uh, grows very well okay the organism which help mushroom mycelium to grow will grow very well and you will you will get a very good compost okay and then after the conditioning you have to uh, open the fresh air vent 100 percent so that your compost temperature comes down to normal temperature outside temperature and then you open the air and spawn the compost so this is all about the short method of compost the design of the tunnel uh, that will be discussed in farm design right so i will not discuss here <laughs> this is the temperature profile and this you see this is the uh, 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 small tunnel uh, pasteurization tunnel okay and this is the equipment which normally we use for big size tunnels like if you have 15 or 30 tons or 50 tons of compost in one tunnel so then it will be difficult to to fill it by manual method right class mein hu class mein class mein class mein hu baad mein baat so uh, uh, so uh, okay so these are some method if you have a bigger unit then you have to use these kind of uh, 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 machineries so that we will discuss in the farm design class not here right so these are some machineries uh, this is the temperature thermometer sensors or display digital display of the thermometer uh, so here you can say 44.4 and 47 so maximum difference is 2.6 degree centigrade so this is this is acceptable up to 3 degree centigrade difference is there it is acceptable not more than 3 degree centigrade right this is the boiler but you don't require boiler here uh, yes boiler will be required but it, it is for the casing pasteurization not here 
so uh, this is the whole uh, uh, flow chart of the uh, short method of composting you will get the presentation so don't worry about this uh, now coming to the third method that is uh, semi indoor method actually this is semi indoor method is an uh, 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 means advanced technique from the short method means it is a type of short method of composting but it is an improvement in short method of composting okay so semi indoor method of composting we need a phase 1 bunker phase 2 tunnel compost yard and saucer seepage pre-wetting area now uh, the what is a saucer seepage pre-wetting area you can see this is a plate like a structure this is a plate like a structure the depth is 1.5 to 2 feet here you can uh, uh, means uh, you can uh, uh, you can fix the amount of water inside it so the uh, means when you wet the your straw your wet uh, your straw will not have uh, uh, means more wetting or less wetting so it will be appropriate so that is why the pre wetting area is being used for proper wetting of the compost then second is your uh, page 1 tunnel this is page 1 tunnel a uh, uh, page 1 tunnel is nothing but two walls are there from both ends it is open and the the floor is a perforated floor you can see this is the perforated floor the perforated floor can be iron gratings can be steel gratings and now the new method is pipe methods you can say uh, this is a header pipe this is a tail pipe and this is a running pipe through the bunkers the bunkers uh, uh, the running pipe will have holes okay many holes uh, it is all calculated we will discuss in the farm design okay and it is fitted with a blower okay so we blow the air inside and these holes are fitted with spigots and spigots have uh, uh, actually the lower base area is having high diameter the top tip is very less diameter so what will happen that when the air will go inside the pressure will increase because of the less diameter of the of the tip okay and almost 2.5 times pressure increase is there in the spigot so it crosses the air crosses very easily uh, in the compost when you put the spigot okay so and the second benefit of the spigot is that the tip is very small so even if something is on the top of it it will not go inside the uh, spigot or the pipe so it will not uh, means you the frequent cleaning of the pipes is not required when you put the spigots so like this you can put the spigots and then you put the concrete over it so this is the uh, uh, phase 1 bunker now phase 1 bunker what is the benefit of the phase 1 bunker from the long, short method of compost because normally what happens when you make the short method of compost outside phase becomes a uh, means a uh, nuisance because in in outdoor phase so many gases like ammonia methane uh, sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide carbon dioxide so there are so many gases that comes out from the uh, outdoor composting okay uh, uh, and this actually creates problem for the neighbors okay from for the neighbors so Uh, and then they object it and uh, finally you have to either you have to close down or you have to shift to some other place okay so that is the problem and with the bunker because continuous flow of air is there so there is no gas coming out of the uh, bunkers so the the emission of the gas becomes minimized in case of bunker okay so complete combustion or complete fermentation is there because oxygen is available so complete combustion will be there so that will actually help uh, 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 to reduce the uh, pollution uh, due to the composting process right so that is why bunker is in place now this is the tunnel you know uh, bulk chamber or tunnel whatever you say uh, and now this is the process flow the wetting of the raw material first then mixing of all ingredients including gypsum because uh, there is no chance of of excess wetting or less wetting because of the your pre wetting area or lagoon okay so no need to give or add excess water uh, uh, in in first turning or second turning so you can you can add gypsum in the start itself okay and then you fill it into the page 1 bunker 
okay in which one bunker the blower is fitted with a timer okay and timer we make a, a, a cycle of 10 minutes where the the, the uh, blower is put off for 7 meter minutes and put on for 3 minutes so in 10 minute cycle the blower is off for 7 minutes on for 3 minutes and this continues up to 3 days okay up to 3 days we continue it okay after three days, we take it out on fourth day and again mix it properly. Again, we fill it into the uh, uh, bunker and this time the on time is reduced. So the off time becomes eight minutes and the on time becomes two minutes for next three days. Okay. So total three and three, six days. And finally, we take it out, mix it properly and then we fill it in the tunnel and then we go for the uh, phase two pasteurization. So it actually helps in two, three ways. One, it reduces the pollution. Second, the, the time taken in this case is lesser than the time taken in case of short method. Normally in short method, it takes around 20 days to complete. But here in this case, it, case, it takes around 15 to 16 days to complete the, uh, the whole composting process. Means four days pre-wetting in short method. Okay, then uh, uh, seven days, uh, uh, eight days outside, so eight and six, 14 days, and uh, sorry, eight and four, 12 days, and then six days in uh, uh, tunnel, so 18 days. So on 19th day, you get the compost. Here in this case, uh, two days in the for wetting because uh, you are using the uh, lagoon, so it takes almost half, half of the time. So almost two days for uh, means wetting, then six days in phase one and six days in phase two. Almost fourteen days it takes, and on fifteenth day you can you can do the compost. Sorry, spawning in the compost. So almost five days it it saves. Okay, and also because five days is saved, the so yield of the uh, of the this method is increased. Okay, significantly. So this is all about the composting processes uh, all the four process i have discussed here uh, okay so Uh, <laughs> Then it is fine. ये कैसे होगा? इसका टेस्ट कहाँ पे होगा? आह ये कहीं भी हो सकता है कोई भी स्वाइल टेस्टिंग लेबोरेटरी आपको बता रहा था मैं हर जगह हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में एक स्वाइल टेस्टिंग लेबोरेटरी होती है तो यू कैन गेट इट चेक फ्रॉम देयर और तो सीएमडी रिपोर्ट आ जाती है सर हम्म दो दिन लगता है सर जैसे आज सर ये क्वेश्चन था जैसे कि अगर हमें 32 टन कंपोस्ट बनाना है तो उसके लिए हमें वीट स्टॉक कितना चाहिए होगा देखिए कंपोस्ट में जो कन्वर्शन होता है आपके शॉर्ट मेथड में वो लग अंदर करता है कि आप कौन सा मेथड यूज कर रहे हैं अगर आप सर शॉर्ट मेथड से यूज करना है अगर शॉर्ट मेथड से कर रहे हैं तो ऑलमोस्ट 2.5 टाइम्स मतलब कि अगर आप 1000 किलो आपको कंपोस्ट बनाना है तो 400 किलो आपको स्ट्रॉ से चलना पड़ेगा तो आप 2.5 से डिवाइड कर दीजिए 32 को तो आपको निकल जाएगा कि कितना स्ट्रॉ आपको लेना है थैंक यू सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर दिस इज श्वेता हियर हां बताइए मैम सर आई हैड अ क्वेश्चन या देयर आर मेनी होटल्स दैट हैव फूड वेस्ट एंड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ सस्टेनेबल पार्ट दे कन्वर्ट द दिस फूड वेस्ट यूजिंग अ कंपोस्टर एज फूड कंपोस्ट 
So mm. can these food compost be used in mushroom growth? No. Normally, the uh, you can use it for you see uh, it is only it can only be used for oyster mushroom or something like that. For button mushroom, it is difficult because you know uh, for button mushroom many things has to be sterilized like nitrogen. Uh, the nitrogen okay. percent will be zero one point six to one point nine percent, and that has to be sterilized. You can use these days also, uh, but. Uh, you have to dry it first you get you get it checked for nitrogen and then only you can supplement it into, into your composting mixture so that is a little difficult part but yes for oyster mushroom uh, directly it can be used there is no problem okay so thank you good afternoon <laughs> Uh, I have a few questions. Firstly, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Yeah, perfect. So I didn't get the ratio properly. Someone had asked that question. For what? Uh, uh, the amount of straw that you would need for one ton of compost. So 2.5 times as in I need 500 yes. kg. If you have, if you have, say, of, if you uh, have a 400, yeah, straw, so multiply it by 2.5 so it will be your compost so if 400 okay. kilo then it will be around uh, 1000 kg right compost perfect another question is what's the what's the shelf life of this compost itself once it's prepared no no shelf life maximum uh, one or two day you can keep without spawning but if you spawn it then you can keep it no problem then then you can go ahead with that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. So I am taking a break for yes, at sir. least half an hour. I have work to do. So I'll be back at four o'clock. So then we will discuss about the crop management. Right? Uh Manoj. Manoj, thoda sa break chahiye yaar. Wo ek kal se jo jana hai na, unko uska thoda sa unko sanction lena hai. To unko five ten minute lagega. Aap discuss kariye Manoj tak tak thoda wo. Yes sir. ठीक है. We will start class at four. Right, right. Okay, okay sir, okay. Okay, dear participant, now you can take a break of 10 minutes uh, and uh, after that we will show a video about the spawn production technology.
नोज आई थिंक आई हैव टू स्टार्ट बिकॉज मेरे को आया नहीं है अभी तक उनका लेटर ना कि कितना करना है तो मैं जब तक खत्म कर लेता हूँ उसके बाद मैं काम करूंगा चलो रांची वाला हाँ रांची वाला यार कल सुबह ही जाना है ना मेरे को चार बजे अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है सर प्लीज स्टार्ट अब बोलो ना सबको हाँ वो ज्वाइन है मैं ग्रुप में मैसेज डाल देता हूँ सर ठीक है
should should i start yes sir yes sir please proceed okay so dear participants i'm back uh, because uh, you know a little bit uh, time constraint is there so i start right now uh so you know in crop management there are few things uh, we have to do some processes or some procedure we have to carry out the first is the spawning second is casing third is cropping watering and harvesting so we will cover up to harvesting not uh, post harvest care we will not be dealing here so for that you need to, uh, you have a separate class of class of uh, post harvest care so first of all the spawning what is a spawning and what is a spawn one spawning is what spawning is mixing of a spawn in the compost is called as spawning simple right so mixing of seed or a spawning is can be of different types depending upon the mushrooms okay so in different mushroom different types of spawning methods we use the first is surface spawning the second is layer spawning and third is the thorough spawning so surface spawning is what when we we uh, use the uh, sawdust substrate for cultivation of some mushroom like uh, your uh, shiitake mushroom like auricularia mushroom like uh, sizophila mushroom like uh, ganoderma mushroom so in that case we use surface spawning because uh, sawdust is having very very high bulk density so when bulk density is high so the aeration becomes very low uh, in high bulk dense uh, or dense substrate okay so in that case uh, the surface spawning or top spawning is preferred because if you put the spawn inside the uh, uh, sawdust so there will not be uh, availability of oxygen and if there is no oxygen there will not will not be any growth of mycelium okay so in that case surface spawning is done second is the layer spawning the layer spawning is done where the uh, substrate bulk density is very very low uh, like uh, in where you where you use uh, straw for cultivation directly straw for cultivation like in oyster mushroom like in paddy straw mushroom like in milky mushroom we normally do the layer spawning in case of layer spawning what we do we put a layer of substrate then we put a layer of spawn then again we put a layer of straw then again we put a layer of spawn so likewise we go up to 3 to 4 layers okay uh, in the layer spawning okay so this is layer spawning then third is thorough spawning in thorough spawning what we do we mix the uh, spawn in the compost and uh, Yeah, this is done when the bulk density of the compost is medium neither it is too high nor it is too low then we go for thorough spawning of the uh, uh, of the uh, compost and uh, particularly button mushroom or any mushroom where the uh, where the uh, uh, mushroom is grown in the compost or where we go for making compost for growing some mushroom then we go for uh, thorough spawning right then coming to a spawning rate spawning rate normally in case of button mushroom we use 0.5 to 0.75% of fresh compost okay wet weight of the compost you can go up to 1% but not more than 1% maximum 1% you can use means uh, 500 kg for 100 kg of compost you can use up to 1 kg per 100 kg compost you can use not more than that not less than that now why uh, 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 lesser than 0.5% is not good or more than 1.5 is uh, sorry more than 1% is uh, not good for uh, spawning because you know in the in case of lower rate the spawn run takes too much of time so slow and poor spawn run is there so in that case chances of uh, uh, getting mold or diseases will be a little higher okay secondly if you go for higher rate of spawning like more than 1% what you do uh, because you know the spawn is made on some of the grains okay any any type of grain you can use for spawn making like paddy paddy grain or wheat grain so in that case any kind of cereal grain that contains cellulose or any cellulose right so if cellulose is there or a starch is there means starch is also there in the mainly grains are containing a starch 
So when you add a starch, so reverse composting process starts. Reverse composting process means in what uh, what happened in the composting process, the cellulose or hemicellulose has to be converted into protein. Okay, and that is why the bacteria or the fungi they grow and they rise the temperature of the compost. So similar is the case here. If you add more spawn, means you are adding more starch, and that will. Uh, 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 that will result into the rise in temperature and that temperature rise more than 30 degrees centigrade that will kill your uh, mushroom mycelium or spawn right so higher rate of spawning is also dangerous so maximum up to one percent and minimum up to 0.5 percent you can use uh, the spawning rate now how to do the spawning for spawning you know uh, we take the spawn uh, normally what do what we do we, we we purchase spawn from somewhere we keep it at lower temperature like four or five degrees centigrade and then when we have to do the uh, spawning we just break the spawn into grains and then we add it into the compost okay so that actually once your spawn is at the lower temperature the growth rate of the mycelium becomes slow right so what we have to do uh, we have to break the spawn first one day earlier, keep it at 25 degrees centigrade so that the temperature of the mycelium comes to normal. And then if you add the mycelium to or uh, spawn to the compost, that will grow faster. So for that, uh, we, we take a bucket or we take a tub, we clean it with formaldehyde solution, that is 0.5% per, formaldehyde solution, clean it properly, and then we add the compost, weigh the compost at how much compost it can accommodate like 50 kg and if you, you are going to use 1% uh, uh, spawning rate then just 500 grams of spawn you add uh, for uh, 50 kg and then you mix it properly and then you uh, uh, fill it into the bags, right. So this is the spawning method. Now there is a question that uh, uh, what is the better method? Because you, you know uh, the mushroom can be cultivated on uh, uh, in bags or can also be cultivated into beds. Okay. Uh, now many people ask that which which method is better uh, or which method gives a better yield than the uh, 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 in the bags or in the uh, beds. So because you know uh, the yield do not depend on the process of cultivation or bed or bags but it depends upon the nutrition available in the compost. So even if you are using it for bed uh, or even if you are using it in bags, the, the yield will remain same. The difference is only one, that is uh, when, you, when you go in the bed method of cultivation, the surface area becomes high. So mushroom grows faster than the bags, right? But you know, the chances of contamination becomes higher in case of the beds because the bed contains almost 500 or 1000 kg of uh, compost at, at a stretch. And uh, if there is one contamination comes into uh, uh, the compost at one place, it will uh, spread through all the compost in the bed. So whole bed will be ruined or will be destroyed. So in that case, bag method is better. So means you have to see uh, that which method you want to go for and if you can if, if you can get purified water for a spraying in the uh, mushroom then definitely the bed method uh, will yield you faster than the bed bag method but uh, you know the the water quality uh, uh, is not that uh, good uh, 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 when you because we take normally from bore well uh, or from stored water we spray, so it contains uh, types of bacteria, types of uh, uh, fungi, and that can cause some disease in your mushroom. So, uh, depends, uh, means you can use bed method or bag method, any type of method, but you, you, you have to be sure that your water quality uh, should be good uh, when you are using the bed method, right? So, after filling the bags or after filling into the beds, we keep the temperature at 25, 22 to 25 degrees centigrade in the room. Okay, because the most congenial temperature for button mushroom mycelium is 25 degrees. 
so once uh, one you once you uh, keep the temperature up to 23 or 25 degree centigrade the temperature in the compost ranges 2 degree higher than the room temperature so normally if you if you have 23 degree temperature in your uh, uh, room so you will have 24 degree temperature in the uh, sorry 25 degree temperature in the compost and if you keep 25 degree centigrade temperature in the cropping room it will be 27 degree centigrade in the compost so uh, it means a 30 degree is the limit so if you cross 26 or 27 degree, if you go up to 27 degree in the cropping room so it means 29 to 30 degree you will reach in the compost and that will that may have uh, some uh, uh, means deleterious effect on the uh, button mushroom mycelium so try to keep the temperature up to 25 or 26 degree temperature in the cropping room not more than that okay second parameter you have to control that is rh relative humidity in the cropping room okay and the third thing is carbon dioxide concentration because mycelial growth of mushroom requires high carbon dioxide concentration more than 10000 ppm okay so almost 0. Point, uh, sorry almost uh, uh, 1 percent uh, 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 concentration is required for uh, uh, mycelial run in the cropping room okay so do we need to uh, flush into the uh, room the carbon dioxide no not required because you know that mushroom mycelium is also a living system so it absorbs oxygen emits carbon dioxide so in the cropping room if you close the cropping room properly no ventilation should be there during the spawn run so if you if you keep the rooms closed properly the, the carbon dioxide concentration comes to 10,000 or more than 10,000 within 24 hours of time. So no need to do anything, just close the rooms, okay? And humidity, relative humidity should be around 85 to 90% when your spawn run is there. So for that, you, know, you do not need to do anything because with high carbon dioxide concentration, relative humidity automatically increases because in the respiration with each two carbon dioxide molecule one molecule of water is produced okay so that when the carbon dioxide concentration increases the relative humidity of the cropping room will also increase so no, no need to go for uh, means any separate thing to do just maintain the temperature close the room and your spawn run will be completed in 10 to 15 days time right so see this is the bag built and uh, we just uh, wrap the bags we do not tie the bags we just wrap the bags because uh, the the oxygen and carbon dioxide should come into the uh, 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 your bag and go outside the bag so means gaseous exchange should be there between your bag and in the cropping room so that is why uh, uh, we do not tie the bags we just uh, do the uh, wrapping of the bags that's all so now after 15 days normally it, it completes in 12 days 10 to 12 days your spawn run becomes complete if the, everything is all right means temperature is all right humidity is all right carbon dioxide is all right then your uh, uh, spawn run will be completed in 10 to 12 days but if your temperature is not proper carbon dioxide is not proper the, the spawn run can be delayed okay so you have to means uh, you have to monitor this if you are going to make a uh, uh, means controlled climate plant okay now uh, what is the uh, means how we can say that uh, yes my uh, uh, spawn run is complete so there are two observations here one that your bag should become white here, here you can see uh, the whole bag is becomes white the second thing is uh, uh, your the bag should have yellow water droplets just below the polythene sheet you can see here or here there is yellow water droplet uh, your golden yellow water droplet should be visible just below your crop, uh, polythene sheet it means your spawn run is complete okay so once your spawn run is complete now we have to do casing okay now what is casing first of all casing is nothing it is just covering the spawn run compost with a layer of pasteurized casing soil okay up to 1 to 1.5 inch thickness about 1.5 inch thickness 
uh, of a casing loyal, uh, soil has to be put on the uh, on the uh, spondon bags. So now, what is uh, the requirement of the casing? Why casing is required? The first is uh, it should it provides a physical support to the growing mushroom because you know uh, you might have seen the button mushroom uh, structure of the button mushroom. It is having a, a stipe and a, have a having a cap. If you separate the cap and the stipe, you will see that the weight of the cap is heavier than the stipe. So if it has to stand vertically, so if cap is heavier, if there is no support to the stipe, it will fall down. The mushroom will fall down, okay, and will not grow properly. So first work or first function of the casing soil is to provide the physical support to the growing mushroom. The second, it, it regulates flow of nutrients from compost to developing mushroom. Now, how it do uh, uh, the uh, movement of the food from uh, your uh, compost to the casing soil or developing mushroom? Because, you know, compost, one property of compost is high water holding capacity. It holds water up to three times of its, of its weight. So, means... Uh, uh, if one kg dry casing soil, if you take, it can absorb up to two kg or two liters of water. So the water holding capacity of the casing soil is very high. Once your water holding capacity of your casing is very high, and when you flow the air on in the cropping room, fresh air, if you give the fresh air in the cropping room during fruiting, what happens? Uh, the water evaporation from the casing soil to the air uh, is is there. Okay, that evaporation is there. And due to that evaporation, the negative, a negative pressure is created in the mushroom mycelium, which actually draw the fluid or water from bottom of the compost. And with the flow of evaporation actually regulates the growing of the fruit body of mushroom. Okay. So that is very important. Uh, so that is second second part of uh, uh, the second function of the casing soil is this. And the third is it's, it facilitates the fruit body development because I have already told you uh, in the beginning in the composting class because we, we cannot use cow dung or buffalo dung for uh, compost making because it is having certain bacteria which produces antibiotic which stops the growth of other microbes. Okay. So the similar thing is there, here we use the uh, 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 cow dung, rotten cow dung, one to two years old, uh, uh, the uh, uh, farmyard manure we use for the uh, casing soil. And that actually having, that is having the, uh, your the bacteria which is producing antibiotic. And that stops the physical growth or mycelial growth of the mushroom. And you know that in any organism, any organism, right? It may be the plant, it may be the animal, it may be the human being, it may be fungi. Uh, the life cycle can be divided into two parts. One is the vegetative growth phase where we grow in our size, in our body. And second phase is the reproductive phase where we grow in our reproductive capacities. We can reproduce, okay? And fruit body is what? Mushroom fruit body is nothing but it is the reproductive body of the mushroom. Okay. So once the uh, uh, your uh, uh, vegetative growth of mycelium stops, then only the fruit body development, development can start. Okay. And this is the reason why uh, casing soil is required. Now this is the qualities of the casing soil as we have already discussed. It should have very high hot water holding capacity. And if water holding capacity is high, it means it will have high porosity. Okay. It will have high porosity means high air spaces will be there. And if high air spaces is there, it means it is light in weight. Means when you take it into hand, it, you will feel that it is very, very light. And the, the one thing I have also told you that 1.5 to 2 year old uh, farmyard manure can be used for uh, casing soil and this actually reflects that it should be nutritionally poor. It should not be nutritionally rich because if it is nutritionally rich, it means it will again support the mushroom mycelium to grow vegetatively. So 
we have to stop the uh, mycelial growth and for that the casing soil should be nutritionally poor so that the mushroom mycelium uh, mushroom do not remain in its vegetative phase but it converts it into fruit body or reproductive phase right the ph should be uh, obviously between 7 to 7.5 because mushroom mycelium uh, is always uh, uh, grows better when the ph is 7 to 7.5 and it is well decomposed again the nutritionally poor and this is well decomposed now what can be the formulations of the casing soil now mixture of two year old fym as i have already told you uh, 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 that is farmyard manure buffalo dung cow dung mixed two year old means it means it is having all the uh, nutritionally uh, means nutrition of uh, fym will be leached up okay or will be removed by the atmosphere okay so yeah. it becomes uh, nutritionally poor or two year old spent mushroom compost compost can also be used for the purpose or garden soil plus sand mixture that can also be used four is to one ratio then decomposed fym plus loam soil that can also be used decomposed quire pith and burnt rice husk that can also be used quire pith you know cocoa peat uh, the cocoa peat can also be very well used for uh, uh, casing soil because you know uh, it is very less in bulk density and uh, secondly uh, when you decompose it uh, it becomes nutritionally poor so it can be easily used burnt rice husk uh, uh, the rice husk normally used in the rice industry to uh, uh, to run the boilers okay and the husk that comes out of the broiler that is a very good casing material so that can be used uh, here uh, for the purpose of casing decomposed fym and burnt rice husk can also be used so any uh, of them can be used for uh, your casing mixture okay so this is some of the casing soils i have given and there are so many other ones uh, so you can check it if you have you find the qualities like there are few parameters that can give you the uh, quality of the casing soil the first is the bulk density means bulk density should be very low when you take it into hands uh, it should be very light. The second is the water holding capacity. The water holding capacity of the uh, casing soil should be high. So if dry casing soil you are taking and if you add two times water, if it absorbs all the water, it means that it, it is a good casing soil. The third is the uh, nutritionally, it should be nutritionally poor. Now how will you adjudge that this is a nutritionally poor substrate and that is very easily uh, you can you can you can say that it is nutritionally poor the tds uh, total dissolved solids if you check uh, for any kind of uh, material uh, and uh, if tds is less than 700 or 800 micro siemens then it is fine or electrical conductivity you can check so for checking tds a uh, simple pens are available uh, pen type of meter is available which normally the RO people use, the, the people who install RO, they have a small pen-like uh, equipment you might have seen. So you just uh, dissolve the uh, your uh, casing soil into water 10 times uh -huh. dilute. Dilute it 10 times means if you take uh -huh. 10 grams of casing soil, uh, mix it with 100 ml of water and just... Sir, and you have SMS button to the number button. Correct chest, which is the milk plant, the bearing raiment in Jochen. I don't understand what you are saying. Please mute yourself. Okay, so uh, I just forgot what I was discussing. Okay, fine. So, uh, uh, means that the TDS you can check. If it is lesser than 1000, then definitely you can use it for casing soil. So all these three parameters, if you get in any kind of soil that can be used as casing mixture, right? So uh, uh, then coming to this treatment of the casing soil. You know, uh, casing soil treatment is very important because, you know, compost is having or compost is rich in uh, nutrition. So, because it is rich in nutrition, 
so the the fungi the bacteria that comes with the compost okay that is normally uh, uh, competitors means they they compete for food in the compost but casing soil is poor in are yaar ruk jao hello ha okay so uh, casing soil uh, uh, is nutrient poor so the bacteria the fungi that comes through the casing soil is normally not the competitors for food but they cause diseases in the mushroom okay so the treatment of casing soil becomes very very important okay so normally uh, if you have a, a round the ear farm or big farm then you should go with the steam pasteurization and for that you have to make a casing soil room put a boiler here and add the steam take the temperature of casing soil to 65 to 70 degree centigrade and then your casing soil is pasteurized in 6 to 8 hours okay so then it will be fine then you can use it for casing soil or if you don't uh, or do not have a proper facility for pasteurization of casing soil then directly you can go for the formalin treatment so 40 liters of water 2 liters of formalin you put into the 40 liters of water spray it on the casing soil 1 ton casing soil okay and up, and then just cover it with polythene sheet leave it for 48 hours remove the polythene sheet shake it properly and then you can use it for Uh, casing uh, uh, or casing your bags okay and then ph of the casing soil before it should be adjusted between 7 to 8 using chalk powder or calcium hydroxide means uh, uh, you know uh, the the slake lime can be used to uh, uh, means adjust the ph because normally the ph of the casing soil is around 5.5 to 6 and you have to take 7 to 7 point 7 to 8 so you have to add some uh, uh, lime or some chalk powder or something like that right so this is the treatment you can see uh, uh, the formalin treatment of the casing soil is going on and uh, how to apply casing soil simply uh, uh, we label the spondrant compost because you know Uh, when the spondrant takes place, the 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 compost surface becomes uh, convex. Okay, and uh, the compost surface becomes convex. So just make it level, break it two to three inches, and level it properly. Okay, uh, and so that if you, when you put the casing soil, it should be uh, at one uh, or thickness should be same all through the bag. And normally one to one point five inch casing soil is laid over the Uh, spawn and bags and watering should be done immediately after the casing soil application so that your casing becomes wet properly wet maintain the same condition as in case of uh, you know, soil run uh, sorry spawn run uh, during the case run period that is 22 to 25 degree centigrade the rh should be 90% or uh, 85 to 90% and the carbon dioxide concentration should be high more than 10000 ppm so same conditions you have to maintain and this case run will take almost one week so in one week you you will see the small small mycelial fragment on the top of the casing soil so that is uh, the uh, the indication of the completion of the casing soil now this is the time you have to take the fruit body or fruiting has to be initiated so you can see here uh, uh this is the uh, spawn run bags and uh, we made a normal uh, uh, measurement normally for 10 kg bag 1.5 kg of uh, uh, casing soil is required okay so uh, uh, we make a measurement of 10.1.5 uh, kg and just put the uh, measurement on the on the bag so that uh, you need not to see that how much height is there every time because it will be difficult sir uh nahi bhejani 
मैं अभी क्लास में उसको क्या करता हूँ उसके बाद करूंगा इसके बाद अभी शाम को करके जाऊंगा हाँ हाँ ओके सो सो लाइक दिस यू सी वी लेवल द केस इन स्वाइल एंड फाइनली वी कीप इट इन द क्रॉपिंग रूम राइट दिस इज द क्वाइल पिथ now how to do the means how to take the clutches or fruit body so when when the case run is done now first thing you have to do that the room temperature has to be brought down to 15 to 18 degree centigrade the room temperature has to be brought down secondly ventilation has to be done means fresh air has to be introduced into the into the uh, uh, cropping room because you know the rh of the the cropping room is nearly 90% and now we have to reduce the rh to 80 85% so we have to add ventilation also the oxygen has to be increased uh, into the cropping room and carbon dioxide level has to be uh, reduced below 1000 ppm it should be below 1000 ppm so ventilation is required at this stage okay uh, so that uh, and uh, you know uh, don't uh, do means uh, reducing temperature and aeration together never do it because you know when you reduce the temperature and at the same time you add the fresh air so it actually results into the uh, mass pinning so many pinnings lakhs of pinnings will be there in the crop I mean in your bags and these pinning will not have the proper space or nutrition in the compost so that it can grow into the full matured fruit body right so this actually this is due to the uh, 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 both the things done together so always do the reduction of temperature first and then you have to add the ventilation normally it the temperature reduction is phase wise 3 degree in one day so if it is 25 degree temp temperature in the room In next day it will be 22. Next day it will be 19. Next day it will be 16. So in three days you have to reduce the temperature to 16 degree centigrade, right? And when once you achieve the temperature at 16 degree centigrade, then you will start uh, giving fresh air into the cropping room, right? So as soon as you start giving the uh, fresh air within three to five days, uh, you will see the in heads will be start will start appearing okay and during whole period the water has to be sprayed every day uh, twice a day depending upon the outside moisture if outside relative humidity is very high during the rainy season then you have to reduce the watering once in a day or once in two days so that will depend upon the Uh, relative humidity of the outside environment right so that you have to see so uh, and you will see this kind of uh, pinhead formation within 3 to 5 days of uh, fresh air induction and uh, finally uh, uh, you will harvest you can harvest the in next 3 to 5 days you can harvest the mature fruit body cap size diameter is 4 to 5 cm uh and uh, cropping continues up to uh 60 days total 60 days cropping cycle is there so normally if you calculate uh 12 days is the spawn run time 8 days is case run time so 20 days 3 days in reducing the temperature 23 days then 3 to 5 days uh, uh in pinhead start so that will be 28 days and next 4 to 5 days you will get the first flush so by 32nd or 33rd day uh, of the spawning you should have the uh, uh, first crop of button mushroom right so and this will continue up to 60th day and because mushroom comes in flushes means in bunches it comes so 4 to 5 days it comes in a uh, i means crop will come in a heavy way then again there will be little crop then again there will be heavy uh, 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 growth of mushroom then again there will be a break so likewise 4 5 days uh, 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 32 to 37 day you will get a good crop then 37 to 38 to 42 days or 43 days you will have a break means less crop will be there again 43rd to 
uh, 48th or 49th day, you will have a good crop. Again, up to 54 days, you will have a break. And again, 54 to 59th day, you will have a good crop. So total 60 days cropping cycle is there for button mushroom. And this six, within this 60 days, you can harvest uh, around 20, 15 to 25 kg uh, 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 mushroom from 100 kg uh, compost, depending upon the uh, method of composting you have used. Okay, so this is uh, all about the button mushroom uh, growing. Here, one thing. Uh, aeration cycle water has to be given you know uh, wisely means you have to see that how much water is required your casing soil should be wet should not be dry so that way you have to give the water one more thing one flush comes like uh, in one room you get a flush of 100 kg say then 100 liters of water has to be a straight in 24 hours time in that particular room because you know 90% of the uh, mushroom weight is water. If 100 kg is the total weight of mushroom you have harvested, it means 90 liters of water it was harvested. Okay. So this actually uh, uh, and 10% is evaporation. So means 100 liters of water has to be sprayed in the cropping room in 24 hours time, not at once, you know. Uh, in two, three times, you can you can replenish the water in the cropping. Okay, so this is your watering schedule, and what should be the aeration schedule? That is also very important. Pressure actually, uh, uh, this is said that uh, uh, the the air of the cropping room should be changed thrice or three to four times uh, uh, in one hour. Okay. So, if your pressure went, if you open 100%, it means you will have, means you will lose everything, temperature inside, uh, 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 you will lose temperature and the temperature outside and inside will remain same. So, normally we open 20% to 25% pressure went. So, it means, uh, uh, it means that in one, uh, uh, one day, you have to give 6 to 8 hours water if it is 22 uh, 20 percent then it is six hours uh, 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 or the 25 percent if you have opened 25 percent then you have to give six hours uh, air if you have given uh, if you if you open it 20 percent then it should be eight hours okay so in whole day you have to give at least six to eight hours fresh air at 20 percent 25 percent uh, for 20 to 25 percent fresh air opening okay and this you can divide into three to four uh, different spells okay if you have to give eight hours say uh, uh, aeration so two hours in the morning two hours in the afternoon two hours in the evening and two hours in the night so likewise you can divide your uh, aeration schedule uh, in the cropping room okay so this is uh, uh, all about the uh, button mushroom cultivation right